Hey guys, this is Darren from Manhattan Physical Therapy. Today I'm here with Steve from the Brooklyn Running Company. So Steve, tell us about your store. Where, where are we located? Where are you guys located? Just tell us about your store in general. Yeah, so um, my name is Steve. I'm one of the managers here at Brooklyn Running Co. Um, I've been here uh, since about 2014, 2015, so several years. Um, but right now we're standing in the Williamsburg uh, store um, that we have here. Uh, so it's located in Williamsburg. It's on Grand Street. Um, and then we have another location that is in uh, Park Slope um, on Bergen and Flatbush. Within our, within our patients and within our demographic, we have a lot of patients who are just um, beginning first time runners or every like weekend runners, you know, running the five to six mile, 5K, 10K yeah. kind of runs. So for a person like that, who's into that level of running, how would you go through the fitting process and what kind of shoes should they be looking for as compared to someone who's gonna be running much longer distances? Yeah, definitely. So um, there's, a, there's a pretty like extensive fit process that we do here um, at Brooklyn Running Co. Um, and really a lot of it um, is just comes down to like conversation mm -hmm. and getting to know your wants and needs as an individual, yeah. um, what kind of running you do. Um, and so we'll ask a lot of questions during the fit process, just trying to get to know you, just trying to get to know exactly what you might need. Um, and then we do have our actual like more sort of scientific fit process where we're going to analyze your gait, we're going to analyze your um, pronation or supination in your, in your foot. Um, and then we're going to basically uh, put you into one of two broad categories of shoes and be able to like have you kind of like, uh, you know, try the shoes out and experience them um, and hopefully and try and get the fit dialed in. Um, so that they'll, you know, work for your stride and your stride mechanics. Awesome. So what are those two broad categories of shoes you, just, you alluded to? Yeah, so you have, um, your, you have two broad categories. You have neutral shoes, which are basically shoes um, without uh, a whole lot of added arch support for people that are um, neutral or maybe like a little bit supinated in their gait. Yeah. Um, so meaning you kind of land more on the outer edges of your feet. Um, and then we have uh, stability shoes, which uh, have a lot more added arch support in there for people that kind of roll in as they walk. Um, we call that overpronation. Gotcha. So, yeah. And now within these categories, those two major arcing, ca arcing categories, are there subcategories within these within the two larger categories? Yeah, definitely. So like, um, there's all kinds of different like levels to it. So a lot of that is like cushioning related. So you have your like lightweight shoes, your you know moderate cushion, high cushion shoes. Um, but then you also have like shoes for more specific purposes. So like your racing shoes, mm -hmm. um, workout shoes, tempo shoes, that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of different um, shoes that you can really use for, again, whatever sort of purposes um, that you might need for, for you as a runner. Gotcha. So the, your workout shoes versus your actual racing shoes, you know, the shoes you're gonna go out there and actually log the miles in. What would be yeah. the primary difference between those types and categories of shoes? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I'll use a couple of examples, awesome. but like this would be a shoe that's probably more oriented towards like a workout experience. It's got a little bit more cushioning to it. Still could, like you could go out and run pretty fast in this shoe. It's fairly lightweight, Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit more moderate and more built for like some durability. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were kind of talking about this one sort of crazy alien looking shoe from yeah. Nike. Um, so these are more what you'll find people like racing marathons in. They're really built for like high performance, high speed, and not so much for like going out and just like doing an easy run. It's, you know, not really built for like durability. So these are, I mean, as crazy as they look, they're just not gonna last as long. Yeah. Uh, or last through as many miles. It's yeah. Something a little bit more like cushioning and protective. So pull these out the box when it's time to go and it's, it's race day and we're ready to go out there. But Absolutely. in terms of your training, try to get something a little bit more durable to get a lot more miles in it. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's definitely generally the, the school of thought. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I know with shoes, performance, right? But I know for a lot of people, price matters. And there's a lot of different categories that go into performance yeah. and price. How would, you, how would you go about meeting both of those two categories? Yeah, definitely. So like value, super important. Um, so you do have, you know, sort of distinct like price tiers to different shoes. And a lot of that is, um, you know, there, there are factors that maybe like enhance comfort or, you know, durability is probably like the big one. Mm -hmm. You spend a little bit more upfront, the shoe might last a little bit longer, but there is definitely a point at which, you know, those two things kind of converge and you can find very good value yeah. in, you know, a sort of mid price um, tier option. So, um, you know, shoes on your moderate cushion uh, kind of category, I think usually capture that. And, you know, I like to just say like a running shoe is kind of an investment. You know, you get the right, right one to, yeah. to get you started, 
and then you're not gonna like have to worry too much about it in the future. And hopefully you can even like go to get the next version of that shoe like going forward, mm -hmm. um, as long as it works for you. Um, also, know that most running shoes update about once per year. So if you actually like find a shoe that you like mm -hmm. and find out like when they update, you can basically try and go to a store and like purchase the previous version of your shoe um, right before it updates or right after mm -hmm. and save a couple bucks because it's likely to be on sale. Right. So that's definitely something like people can do to sort of take advantage of that. Awesome, awesome. Speaking of that, when when new shoes come out, let's talk about the, the, the shelf life of a running shoe. So yeah. we've been out there, we've been training, we've been getting some miles in. When is it time to switch shoes or get the new pair of shoes? When do I know that I've run through my shoes? Yeah, so it's it can always be kind of tough um, to, to really tell um, when a running shoe is done. But one of my tricks is to like look at the tread on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so you obviously, most shoes have some sort of like thick rubber um, to like surround the foam because um, rubber is going to be a lot more durable. And once you start to see that rubber kind of like lose the natural like pattern, whatever the, de the designers are using, you'll start to see it kind of like bevel off and get like kind of shaved down. That's one indicator that a shoe is kind of probably mm -hmm. reaching the end of its lifespan. If I were to put a number on it, um, most most shoe manufacturers, or broadly speaking, like training shoes, will last you about 300 to 500 um, miles that you've run on the shoe. Okay. Of course, if you're if you're wearing your shoe and you're running in it, you're walking in it, you're mm -hmm. taking it to the gym, that that's not going to be the same like you know lifespan. Like you're gonna you're gonna squeeze the the air out of the sole a little bit more quickly. Um, but 300 to 500 miles is pretty much what you'd expect with a good training shoe. Gotcha. Um, so outside of running shoes, what other type of equipment do you offer for the runners, for runners here at Brooklyn Running Co? Yeah, definitely. So I'm like got a couple things here. A um, couple of like essentials, I guess. Um, I mean, definitely with any running shoe, you want to wear a good running sock. Um, so running socks, believe it or not, make a big difference, um, not just for sort of like overall comfort, um, because they're gonna, you know, sit closer to the foot. They kind of are designed with like usually some material that's gonna fit tighter across the arch. It's just gonna feel a lot more comfortable. But they'll also help prevent things like blisters from forming, yeah. stuff like that. That's just like no fun. No fun at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, insoles are sometimes something that can be like a really useful trick to like help a shoe just fit a little bit better. Um, a lot of people, you know, find sometimes like a shoe maybe the arch profile doesn't quite match their natural like arch mm -hmm. to their foot. So we'll sometimes offer things like insoles to help correct that and just like enhance the comfort of the of the shoe that you pick. Yeah. Um, the last thing, um, this is like one really unique like tool that a lot of runners use um, probably on a daily basis. It's called the stick, um, but we also have things like foam rollers that are gonna serve the same function. But it's basically a way to sort of like massage tight muscles, yeah. um, you know, after like a long run or whatever, and your muscles get kind of tight. It's a really good way to kind of like get the blood flow back through there and help like keep your body feeling healthy yeah. uh, over the long term. Yeah. So I, I know you mentioned to me that Brooklyn Running Co. Is really has a big emphasis on community. What are some of the community um, programs that you guys do here for not only Brooklyn, but also New York City at large? Yeah, definitely. So obviously like running is a huge like community sport. It's great to go for a run with other people. And you know, we understand that here. It's like very important to what we do. So um, we have a lot of running clubs that will meet up out of our store on a pretty regular basis, um, usually a couple times per week. Um, so we like really like to support that. We kind of act as like a, a little bit of like a clubhouse. People can kind of you know drop their bags and you know use the restroom facilities and stuff, um, and then go for their run. Um, but we'll also do you know pretty regular like quarterly like big events where maybe we'll have like a pub run or um, some sort of like fun concept that yeah. we'll do to just engage the community, get people out and like socializing and whatnot. Um, and then probably our biggest event of the year is an event called the Brooklyn Mile. Um, it's like a, a road race that our small team like produces, um, and we we host it in the summer every year. It's a huge hit. Um, a lot of the like run clubs, like New York City's running scene, is like huge. So we get a lot of those uh, club runners coming out and competing, and it's it's just a ton of fun. It's it's one of my favorite things that we do here at the store. <clears throat> It's also a charity uh, event, so all the money that we, you know, get from the race um, goes to a charity called um, uh, Girls on the Run. Um, and it's like a, a young women's like 
advocacy organization that actually uses running to help girls like build life skills. So nice. It's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. And when is the next Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn Mile? So 2021, we are actually, we're going to shift the date this year a little bit. I think we're going to go back to um, probably August. Okay. Uh, so it, it is sort of like in the heat of the summer, uh, but you know, you finish that mile, get a nice, cool, hey. refreshing beverage. There you uh, go. You'll, you'll feel <laughs> yeah. all right. Awesome. So. Awesome. So of course, follow Brooklyn Running Co. on, on Instagram just to, yeah. to find out the dates locations and any other information that they may have out there. Definitely.